Hello, everyone, and welcome to our vlog for today, the three words the ego fears most. Before we get into those three words, I want to give you kind of an example. So there are situations that rise in our lives where we believe it's all up to us to get it all done. It's us. It's our job to figure it out. It's our job to heal it. It's our job to do all the doings that must be done in order for this thing to uh, be resolved in whatever way, shape, or form. And we are very busy in our minds being like, okay, this has to get done and this has to get done and this has to get done in order for this to get done. And in that busyness in our own minds, what we're actually doing is we're blocking the help that could instantly help us out of this situation that we're in. And all we have to acknowledge is, I don't know. Now, those are the three words right there that the ego is terrified of because the moment that you really believe those words, that you are really like, I just don't know, that is when you are willing to let go of what the ego is saying, because the ego only has a very extremely narrow viewpoint of a situation, and it has no foreknowledge. All it can ever do is pull from the past and be like, well, this worked last time, maybe it'll work this time. That's all that it can do. It cannot necessarily come up with new ideas because it can only pull from the past. And I don't know if you've heard that uh, old adage that says one step forward, two steps back. That's what happens when we listen to our ego and we are attempting to solve the problem or heal the thing or do the this or start you know, doing things by ourselves is we're taking what seems like one step forward, but really we're taking two steps back because we're not going anywhere. There's a famous quote, and I don't know who said it. I think it's Albert Einstein, not 100% about that. The quote though is, you cannot solve the problem from the level of consciousness and or the level of thinking in which the problem was made. Okay, and I'll say it again. You cannot solve the problem from the level of consciousness or thinking in which the problem was made. And that's what the ego is always trying to get us to do. It's saying, okay, well, it's from this level of consciousness, from the ego's viewpoint of things, that this problem seemed to rise up. And we cannot solve the problem from that level of consciousness because that level of consciousness is that which created it. And again, we may seem like we're making some headway. We may seem like we're getting somewhere, but really we're just taking one level little step forward and one little step back and we're not going anywhere. It's not until we invite spirit to come in to our minds with those three words, because those, those three words, I don't know, may be the words that the ego fears the most, but to spirit, those are words of invitation. Those are words of joy and excitement. And the reason that spirit gets so excited is because it find, it's saying, oh, you've done it. You have finally let go of what you think you think and what you think you know. And it's that moment that you release your expectation. You release everything you think you know about the situation, how it's supposed to end up, the action steps you're supposed to take and so forth and so on. Now, this doesn't mean that you just go ahead and you just sit on your thoughts. That's not what this is an invitation for. This is an invitation to step back and really allow spirit to inform you on the guided action steps that are gonna lead you to the highest and happiest outcome that you may not be aware of. And if we are in this, I know mind, well, I know this and I know that, and I know I should, and I know this, and where's there room for spirit? Where is there room for spirit to direct you? If you are always directing the body to run over here, run over there, go over here, pick up this, pick up that, do that. 
Where is there room for spirit to intercede on your behalf? There is none. And so this is so important. Again, and I'm going to reiterate it, is that our job is not to be the healer, not to be the fixer, not to be the doer. Our job is merely to acknowledge that we are entering into a state that isn't loving or that isn't kind or that isn't joyful. That's our job that acknowledgement. And then we invite spirit and be like, okay, well, spirit right now, I seem to be in a contrary uh, or contrasting, um, what will we call this, viewpoint or emotional state. I don't know how to get out of this, but I am willing to come to you to guide me to what is going to lead me to back to that joy, back to that happiness. And again, this you're actually acknowledging the, the feeling. You're acknowledging what the thoughts are. You're not just being like, okay, that's it. It's contrary. And now I'm throwing it away. You're saying, okay, I'm feeling contrary. I'm feeling the, you know, these contrasting thoughts. I'm seeing them. I'm acknowledging them. Spirit, I want to give them over to you so that you may take them from me and heal them for me. Now, why is it that we want that I keep on saying, give it to spirit, give it to spirit? And it goes back to the Albert Einstein and or other famous person who said, you cannot solve the problem from the level of consciousness or thinking in which the problem was made. Spirit is looking at this situation from a much higher, much broader perspective. And it not only can help you to get out of the situation, but in getting out of the situation, you may be actually helping others. That is the beauty of working with spirit. That's how wonderful it is because it says, okay, well, you're in this situation, but because you're in this situation, you can actually be of service to this person in this situation. You guys are actually going to help each other, which is going to help these people and going to help these people and going to help this person. And, and the list just goes on and on. We can't see that. The ego is very, you know, horsey blinders, can't see anything beyond its own viewpoint. It says, no, there's nothing else. I got to get out of this. I have to get myself out of here. And spirit tells us, spirit says, relax and let me do it for you and through you. Let me guide you back to where you're supposed to be, which is joyful, happy. So, you know, feeling at peace. Let me guide you back to that place because your thinking that got you here isn't going to get you back. However, I can get you back. I can guide you. And again, if we let spirit have our body, and what I mean by that is letting spirit really direct your actions. And we've all actually gone into a state of what you can call channeling. You can call it divine intervention, whatever you want. We've all entered that state. If you do art, and you're just painting a picture and your hand just seems to move in directions and you're just like going with it and you are just at peace and you just feel yourself being guided with pin strokes. Maybe you're a musician and you know, the, your fingers start moving and the melody just feels so good. And, or maybe you're a singer and you start hitting different notes and start going in different directions where, from where the music intended you to go. And it's just this effortless expression of joy and love. Maybe you are just folding your laundry and you are just in this state of just peace. And this idea for lemon cake pops into your head and you're like, oh my God, that would taste so good. I would really like that. And you just happen to, uh, or maybe you're a baker and maybe you substitute an ingredient. You just feel guided to. Those are all when spirit is taking control of you because you've let it, because you stepped back and said, I don't know what to do here, but I am open and willing to be used. And that's all we have to be open and willing. And it's just with three words, but we have to mean those three words. I don't know. And then be willing to be guided. Now, when I say that, this is where a lot of people get a hang up. 
they're like, okay, well, yeah, I don't know how to fix this situation. So then they play what Robin Duncan calls, come on, God. And the come on, God game is another game of the ego. The ego says, okay, you want to invite someone else into this ball game? Totally fine. Not a problem. But we're still going after what I want the outcome I want. And that's what we all have a tendency to do is we'll say, okay, I don't know what to do here. Spirit come guide me. But what we're really saying underneath that is, okay, I don't know what to do here to get the outcome I want um, or to get the expectation that I want. So spirit, tell me how to get the outcome or get the person, the place, the situation, the company to act or do what I want them to do. That is not what this tool is for. This tool is to help you release all of that, to let go of that so that you can truly be guided. And maybe you will get that outcome. And I can tell you just from my own personal experience, when you invite spirit and actually, you know what, I'll just tell you this personal parable. So uh, when I published my first book, The Intuitive's Tool Belt, I didn't know how I was going to get it published. I didn't know anything. And so I, you know, just got the guidance. So I wrote the whole book. Okay. The Intuitive's Tool Belt wrote it out in a notebook. And then from a notebook, typed it all up. And I was like, okay, done. I don't know what to do with it now, but I'm here. And then I think it was like a week later, my mom comes home. She hands me a receipt from her work. And I was like, what's this? She's like, call this lady. And I was like, why? And she's like, I don't know how we got on the topic. However, when we did, uh, she does self-publishing. She comes into the gas station, you know, the gas station where my mom works all the time and, you know, gets her snacks and drinks and so forth. And they just got on this topic and she's like, yeah, I work for self-publishing. And then my mom was like, oh my God, my son's trying to publish a book by himself. And she was like, here's my number, have him call me. So there we go, called the lady. It was some monies at that point that I didn't have. And I just said, oh, you know, thank you so much. I really appreciate this and I'll get back to you. I wasn't gonna get back to her. It was one of those like, I'll get back to you because I was afraid to let this person down. I was like, oh my gosh, I finally get this opportunity. It's right here in front of me. And, but I wasn't going to return her call. Well, that's where spirit said, guess what? This is what you, this is what I am guiding you towards. And so she went back into the gas station a couple of weeks later and was like, why didn't your son call me? And my mom was like, he doesn't have the money. He works at kinder care. Like he doesn't have tons of money. And she was like, why didn't he just say so? She's like, I could have given up my commission for him. So that way I've been more affordable and we can break it up into payments. And she's like, we have so many options to help authors. And I was like, oh my God. And I was like, okay, well let's, you know, so we worked on a payment plan. It worked out beautifully. And she was like, well, you need someone to edit this. And I was like, oh yeah. Cause my writing is um, where I, I write very much like I speak, very few sent, very few breaths. And so, uh, you know, didn't know where I was going to find an editor. And they, of course, did support, you know, they're like, well, we have editors that you can buy. And I was like, yeah, that's going to be a, a hard no. I'm paying you this amount of money. And this is what I have. This is what I can do. Well, then a friend of mine calls and she's like, hey, I got laid off work, you know, just kind of that just telling me that she got laid off work and that she was going to go find something else. But this was a great time for her to just kind of relax because she needed a break. And I was like, that's wonderful. And then she was like, what are you up to? And I told her and she was like, oh my God, didn't you know that she's like, I have a minor in language arts. And I was like, girl, what? And I was like, do you want to edit my book? And she's like, yeah, I'll do it for free. She's like, I'm not doing anything else. And I was like, oh my God. So then that worked. And so then, you know, I found, I already had an idea for illustrators and it was two ladies from work because both of them went to Heron University and both of them are fantastic artists. And so they did the artwork for me. So that all worked out. And the final step was, how am I going to like um, promote the book? How am I going to get my book out there? And I really had no idea. And I just really let it go. Like I was trying to think of it, trying to like brainstorm and I just couldn't really think of anything. And so I was just like, okay, I let it go. And I was like, spirit, you tell me what to do. Well, I was at work and it was nap time. I was just about to leave for, for the day <clears throat> or to go on my lunch break. 
No, I was going to leave for the day. I think it was a half day for me. And so, you know, all the kids were asleep. And so I was just, you know, listening to the podcast on my phone and, you know, writing out the papers, what we had eaten for lunch and, you know, special notes and different stuff like that, you know. And so I'm sitting there and this part, like the podcast person, because, you know, you phoned in was like, hi, what's your name and your birthday for Sonia? And I was like, Sonia Choquette. And they're like, yeah, she's, she's on our show today. And I was like, Oh my God. And I was like, uh, so I give the person my birthday and I'm like, here's my birthday. And she was like, okay, you're in the queue for Sonia. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to talk to Sonia. I was so excited. And then, um, from there I had two parents come in and these parents chatty Cathy's like, they would just chat your ear off. And so I was like, Oh, well, like this is my primary source of income. This is where I got to pay attention. And they literally walked into like, we got to go. Both parents are like, we're on our, like, we got to go. They got appointments. I got places to be. And I was like, here you go. Have a great day. And so, uh, you know, they left. I literally sit down, put my earbud or put, yeah, the earbud back in my ear. Hi, caller. And I was like, hello. And she was like, so, you know, so it was Sonia. And she's like, what's your name? And I was like, my name's Ron Schaefer. And she was like, well, how are you living an intuitive life? So I'm telling her like all these things. And she was like, wow, that's really great, Ron. And she was like, and then of course, you know, get like pumping me up a little bit. She's like, this is what it's like to live an intuitive life. Like see how he's guided every step of the way and everything's just falling into place. And I was like, oh my God, Sonia's talking about me. And um, from there, um, she's like, I want to do something for you. She's like, because you're living an intuitive life. And I was like, okay. And I'm thinking like a class, a deck, like maybe, you know, she'll give me like a name of a spirit guide. I didn't know. And she was like, send me your book. And I said, I'm sorry. She goes, send me your book. Um, email my, uh, assistant and, um, you know, you'll get my address in Paris. She's like, that's where I live now. And I was like, um, okay. I was like, thank you so much. She's like, have a great day. And I was like, like, and so I sat there and then phone, the call just ended. Like I didn't get to listen to the rest of the podcast. It just ended. And I was just like, I sat there for a minute and I started to cry. And I was like, oh my God, spirit has my back. Like I'm going to get my book out there. Sonia's going to promote it. Cause she's like, I'll put it in my newsletter. And I just, you know, I'm just crying. I'm weeping. And one of the kids is like, you okay, Ron? And I was like, I'm fine. Lay down. Um, and then of course I go out to the car and I start crying to my mom and it's just tears of joy because I just, I didn't know how else I was like, how does this happen? And that is just how, when you let go, <clears throat> excuse me, and you really allow spirit to take the lead and you're going to not only get where you need to be but there's going to be extra little like surprises, things that you never expected. I never expected Sonia Choquette, you know, Hay House, author extraordinaire, psychic, intuitive, like my idol would be like, oh yeah, I'll put it in my news, like send me your book. I'll put it in my June newsletter. Okay. And that was like five, six years ago. And it just, it floors me every time. It's just like, wow, you know, it, their spirit's always going to give you that little bit of extra. And you're, you're not getting a little bit of extra as like a pat on the back to be like, good job. You called on me. It's more like, this is how life is supposed to be. This is how it's supposed to go. You're supposed to be guided and led and, you know, happy surprises, happy things. Uh, to come to you that you never expected. I mean, even with the house that we're currently living in, it's it was lot number 111. You know, we didn't have to put a down payment. And when we moved in, they paid us. They paid my family to move into the house. And, you know, doing with a VA loan, because my dad is a veteran. And, you know, our realtor was kind of like, that doesn't happen. Like, a lot. She's like, that's very rare for you to, you know, with the loan that you have, you know, to get money. And the money was actually the exact amount of the first payment. So we didn't even really have to pay our first like mortgage because it was technically already paid for. And then we got another little extra surprise because then we had too much money in our escrow, which we didn't know that we had too much money in there, but they were like, Hey, you get this money back too. So it was just like, 
you know, this magic of just like, here's some money. Oh, here's some more money. I'm not saying that it's always going to be money. I mean, Sonia Choquette, who knows? You may call into a show. Sonia may be the guest and you may get your book, you know, uh, out there. I don't know. But spirit does. And spirit is just waiting for you. So be willing to acknowledge when a situation rises up that you don't know what to do, that you don't have to know every step, that all you have to do is be willing to say, spirit, I dedicate this situation to you, or I give this situation to you. I don't know what to do. And if you feel like, well, I need to take a step, that's okay. Take the step that feels most peaceful, that's going to bring up your peace and bring down your fear. And then let spirit work through you the rest of the way. Spirit's not asking you not to have fearful thoughts. It knows you're going to have fearful thoughts. It just says, don't keep those fearful thoughts running in your mind. Let spirit's loving thoughts take their place. Let spirit give you your true thoughts. So that is today's blog. I thank you so much for joining me. I thank you so much for being here. And I will see you all uh, in the posts for the rest of the week. Bye for now.